it's lovely to be here with you. Um, I'm Remote Sensing Mapping Manager at Historic Environment Scotland and I joined them quite recently, only half a year ago. And I will deliver this presentation on behalf of Dave Cowley and myself. <clears throat> so, although Historic Environment Scotland was founded quite recently, we all, I suppose, know that the history of Royal Commission and, and uh, Historic Scotland is a bit longer. Uh, so we aim to be the lead public body for the historic environment Scotland, for, for Scottish historic environment, and that's why we are also thinking about national scale and delivering national uh, wide products. And this is what the project is about. So we've, we've been trying to develop an approach to national mapping, and we are using the case study of Aran, the Isle of Aran. And there are two teams uh, from the survey and recording um, part of our organization that are working on Aran. And these are people based in the aerial survey and archaeology field uh, survey teams. Uh, although um, Hmm, something wrong here. Apparently, it ends in the 30s. Yes. I uh, don't know what happened here, but um, this map presents that although there were plenty of archaeological surveys all around Scotland, uh, the main discoveries were actually that actually took place around big cities, around Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, or Perth, and still there are regions which have not been visited at all, and uh, our pre previous presentation show, shown it quite nicely that there are abundant and vast areas of Scotland that haven't been um, visited, uh, whereas the others attracted much attention. So when the national detailed topographic survey was a uh, program was launched in the 70s. Uh, after 25 years, only about 10% of Scotland was covered. And we all know that it's not going to happen. To, the, the, co the full coverage of Scotland will not happen because uh, of the lack of resources and so on and so forth. However, the systematic survey routines increased numbers of known monuments by 50 to 200%, up to 200%. Uh, but on the other hand, it produces this kind of islands where you get high density areas uh, of uh, historic environment uh, features, uh, whereas the other uh, parts of Scotland are not well uh, prospected. On the other hand, we've got remote sensing data, which is proliferating right now and is quite easily ac accessible to all of us. And if we are talking about urban laser scanning data, which is provided for free right now by the Sco Scottish government. We can all download it and work with it. And there are also plenty of vertical uh, photographs, aerial photographs, and not to mention all the aerial uh, historic photographs that are archived uh, in the John Sinclair House in Edinburgh. So to, put this, to wrap up this context, much of Scotland's archaeology is not on the record and majority of remote sensing data is not exploited for archaeological purposes yet because of its, its vastness and uh, the limited resources. However, the remote sensing data is proliferating and we all believe, and this happens on the continent as well, that uh, more and more projects uh, run on this type of data. And the use of remote sensing data is largely constrained within the traditional methods of prospection and object identification developed in the 20th century. So, although we've got fantastic tradition of traditional uh, tradition of, of um, uh, current approach and traditional methods of prospection, we are right now dealing with the digital 3D data and how are we going to use it uh, in the same way we approach the historic moment issues uh, up to date, or shall we? Um, develop a new approach. So our response is to develop an approach to national rapid mapping. 
and rapid in this in this case is an important word because we aim if this project gives us a proper uh, results we aim to cover majority of scotland artists best areas of scotland within a decade not decades not centuries So the questions we try to answer here is whether the national coverage is necessary. We believe it is, and we believe that we've got the resources to do that. Um, but it has to be a balance between the extent of coverage and the level of recording detail. We are not going to uh, cover the entire Scotland with a high detailed surveys, obviously, because as we see, this didn't work. I mean, it worked in the case that, in a sense, that it delivered uh, fantastic results but it's just too engaging and how comprehensive the approach is it's going to uh, and it actually uses uh, all the archive data and the uh, remote sensing data and we are actually talking about a minimum level of record and we are relying on the remote sensing data as a primary and actually the most important source of our uh, inquiries and what is the role of field observation in this case? How shall we uh, plan our field works if we observe feature, archaeological features in remote sensing data? And how we do, do we define the quality of our observation, of our field work, of our interpretation? And last but not least, how can we speed up archaeological survey? So we've chosen the, Scot the Isle of Arran. Uh, due to manifold reasons, uh, it's Scotland in miniature, so it's uh, it's it's there are all landscape types of Scotland data uh, in the entire country. They are all uh, there. So we got highlands, we got um, we got lowlands, we got raised beaches. All is there also some plantations, coniferous plantations and so on and so forth. And there is also, also abundance of archaeological uh, sites dating from the earlier, earliest periods up to modern ages. Our traditional approach at, at the Royal Commission, although I don't remember the good old days, I haven't been there <laughs> back then, um, it's, we, de we defined four or five levels of survey and where does our survey and proposed national mapping fit in? It would be something between level one and level two. It all depends on the quality of data and on the quality of <coughs> our interpretations. But we are thinking more about creating a basic record to to feed up to feed Canmore with plenty of data and to show to all of you uh, a better to to propose you a better understanding of historic environment. So we, we are aiming to answer basically four questions. Where, what, when, and how. Uh, how, how the feature was uh, identified. And where, where the site is, what it is, and if we can date it to, to a certain extent, we would love to answer these questions. And what are the relationships between uh, sometimes deeper records and in historic environment, local historic environment records and Kanma and the national record. Sure, absolutely. All right, and perhaps is it better? Right, and would readily available as urban laser scanning visualization change what we do now? This is an important question. Uh, we are not using actually really um, the ready uh, visualizations. We produce them on our own. So we are taking, we are downloading the raw data as as raw as in the rawest form it can be. So the point cloud from the remote, from the remote sensing portal of Scottish government, and we reproduce our own visualizations according to current practices, and we try to interpret it. And when we interpret it, we've got different levels of confidence. We've got different people with different backgrounds, with different expertise levels in observing remote sensing data, 
but we also got different types of land use, di different types of archaeological features. We get different um, uh, states of preservation, and therefore we get different levels of confidence, our confidence of, of the confidence of our interpretation. And because of that, we are asked a, a question: if, Is a field visit required? Sometimes the archaeological features, which we as this group of roundhouses and small cairns and and banks is so clear that we see it all easily and we can interpret it without any problem. So this, in our uh, project, would, would get a level of confidence three, uh, one, sorry, the highest. Uh, however, we've got other uh, archaeological features which may or may not be clearly visible and the confidence of our interpretation is lower. And even if we use different sources, when you get these are ALS visualizations over here, uh, and this is an orthophoto map. We still are not, very, are not sure about whether this is a roundhouse or is it a, a, and a topographic feature because of this boulder over here. Actually, things around uh, it, it, it uh, the ground around it, it is getting uh, deeper and deeper. And then we've got features which are which look like shaving huts, but done and they, the location is quite good next to the next to the burns. But sometimes we get so many natural features which look quite alike in the data. So there we are. We are sure we are. Uh, it's clear to us that there are issues with the, with using uh, remote sensing that as a primary uh, source of information. Uh, but do we actually believe in ground truth uh, if we send someone, if we send our groups to do some ground truthing and they are, they've got limited um, time to do that and limited resources? Uh, sometimes some features will never be uh, interpreted with a high level of certainty and confidence. So what is the role of field visits here? Uh, the role of field visit in this context is to visit only the targeted sites that are with that were identified with a low level of confidence. So we are sending our our our, our teams only to these parts of the of the of the island where we were unsure in our uh, interpretation. However, it does not mean that our results are uh, poor. Here's, here's an example of, 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 of Canmore description of a site in Western Arn, when we got an entire description of the site, we got where we've got uh, hot circle and, and banks and, and cairns and so on and so forth. And only these few words in black could not be interpreted uh, on the basis of uh, a remote sensing. Data interpretation. All the rest could be uh, determined and, and could be um, written without uh, going into the field and solely on the basis of in the interpretation of ALS data. However, if we look deeper into, into Kalman, we, we can see other examples where actually remote sensing data gives us a different view on what was interpreted in the field. In this object, this object over here clearly looks different from other hot circles around it. And apparently, although it was interpreted as a hot circle, it's a burnt mound. And we can see, clear, we can see it clearly, not only in the uh, top to bottom view of the ALS data, but also in the cross sections that uh, we can do, which, we, which we can analyze uh, on the basis of ALS data, and when we compare it to the lo when we take the location and other uh, resources uh, into account, we see that actually we are getting results. We can update Canmore without visiting uh, particular features. Obviously, it's not about showing ALS visualizations without any narrative, without interpreting them without uh, saying what is what is what and what 
we see and whether we believe in what we see or not. Because only presenting this kind of images uh, do not tell us much, although it does uh, tell us quite a lot. However, as a basic record, we need to make a decision how are we going to uh, draw the site limit of the features uh, and what are the decisions of our, uh, in our interpretation. So we can draw a big polygon, blue polygon around the entire area, or we can actually draw small polygons if we feel that these are different groups and different clusters. However, we can also create a more detailed record solely on the basis of ALS data, where we can actually point out, interpret every single uh, shilling uh, mount or hut in this area. So the Aran Silver project looks like this. We started with the with the aerial reconnaissance and interpretation of of remote sensing data. We determine the level of confidence and we ask our interpreters to uh, determine. I mean to uh, mark with with which level of confidence they were uh, making their interpretations. And we try to uh, add the information about where it is, what it is, what it, when it is, and the event, in this case, uh, ALS data interpretation. And we identify sites and areas for visit, field visits. We, we started with polygonization of the point data that is in, in Carmo, and we were using the old and current OS maps, field edition maps, area photographs, and ALS data for it. And during our project, we did not visit the sites that were already in Carmo. We only uh, aimed to, to visit the new sites and new uh, objects that we identified. And we were using different uh, ALS vi visualizations. Uh, both independently or clustered together. And in this rapid desk-based prospection, uh, all types of archaeological uh, features were interpreted, so starting from shilling huts and run houses up to a large areas of cultivation, uh, lazy beds or, or re -infaro, a type of cultivation. That is quite a lot of it in, on our own. So, we had, as it comes to this rapid aspect of our approach, we had eight interpreters working three working days each. And as a result, it was about 30 square kilometers per person per, per day for basic polygonization. Right? So this allowed us to identify what, more than 2,100 targets with different level of confidence uh, on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on Aran, which is 432 square kilometers. And you have to have in mind that there were interpreters with different levels of uh, expertise in interpreting uh, ALS data, and this also uh, caused many issues uh, in this case. Right now, we are after fieldwork. We, we visited Aran um, between February and May this year, and in six weeks of field visit, six persons, three teams of two people uh, uh, going all, all around Aran, and 150 targets visited, which comprise about 95% of level two and, and level three confidence, so the low level confidence sites. About 1,200 uh, features were identified with, high, with the highest level of confidence and they were not visited this year, at uh, this time. And apart from that, during our feedback, we, we identified 300 features that were not picked up from the ALS data visual, uh, interpretation. And this is due to two reasons. One is the, the lack of expertise of our team, of some members of our team in interpreting ALS data. However, there were features that are absolutely invisible on the ALS data. And this uh, regards both to the areas of dense conivorous plantations in Aran, but also areas where there are 
lots of boulders and, and rock outcrops and so on and so forth. So we, we know that the, the role of expertise is, is extremely important in that, and it's both in the field observation and in uh, interpretation of ALS data. And we know that sometimes we seek patterns and we want to, we, we get some wishful thinking in our uh, approach. Uh, so many sites were actually dismissed uh, that were, uh, the, uh, the, the features that were interpreted on the basis of ALS data were dismissed in the field. And this is also uh, a reason for uh, future developments of this approach. And we, but we know that both field observation and ALS data interpretation is dependent on our expectations, our expertise, questions and accuracy. So what is accountability of this approach? Can we say that this is a hot circle or this is a... Uh, a round uh, uh, a shilling hat because I say so. What are the what are the um, basis of our interpretation? And obviously, if we got different interpreters, the same feature will be interpreted in different ways. So we had a try because of because of that. We we are having a try with deep learning and artificial intelligence and learning. So the prehistory of automation and automatic feature detection uh, in remote sensing data, whether it is for archaeology or any other resources, uh, it's, it's, its history is about two or three decades. It started with a, uh, adaptive template matching and custom algorithms. However, in the last few, year, few six years, uh, a, deep, a new approach, uh, artificial inter intelligence, and in other words, deep learning, emerged. Uh, so this is all what we got on Facebook uh, when the fa face recognition uh, is, takes place. Puppies can be recognized like that on the photos, so why not uh, archaeological uh, features? And we teamed up with, with the Norwegian Computing <coughs> Center, and we are uh, testing and convolutional neural, neural network, uh, which was developed by Olivier de Trier uh, in, in the, in f few years ago, and they have pre-trained uh, their system, the algorithm, to identify automatic, uh, to automatically identify charcoal kilns. And their hit rate was about 90% uh, of, of posit um, true positives. So the charcoal kiln is there and it was interpreted by the deep network. The problem with this is that it often creates um, false positives. Uh, by this we mean the, the features that were identified by the network, but they are not real at all. Uh, so our automatic object detection is a proof of concept right now. And we've got a learning set for hot circles, small kerns, and shilling hats. And we believe that if we create a proper, uh, net, uh, proper network, uh, which works on Aran, we then will be able to use it on, in other parts of Scotland, at least for this uh, relatively simple uh, archaeological features, and to detect uh, at least hot circles all over uh, Scotland, at least to some extent. It's not a threat to our cultural interpretation expertise, but a tool, and it all depends on the expertise of the programmer and, and the system on which it is built on. <coughs> so on Aran, uh, it, was, it took about uh, 30, kilometers, uh, 30 square kilometers per day per, per person, and it was a single data source, and it, it, uh, the convolutional neural network uh, lear was taught, learned only on the basis of, of, of uh, on the subset of hot circles, small kerns, and shilling hats. And these are the preliminary results, so uh, please do not um, argue with, uh, please do not uh, believe in them too much right now. But the deeper the color is, you get three different colors, which are uh, responsible for three different 
types of, of archaeological features, so the, the, the small currents, uh, shining huts, and hut circles. The deeper the color is, the higher the probability that uh, a feature is there. As we see, in terms of, uh, of hot circles, the heat rate is absolutely uh, great. And uh, right now, we reached about 80% of, of uh, true positives as it comes to hot circles. However, obviously, uh, the, the land use features, uh, this all disturbs our, uh, how the uh, system, how, how the neural network works, and instead of uh, shielding huts, here yeah, we've got some uh, features that are related to drainage or to uh, modern dikes, and so on. But so to sum, to sum this up, uh, we try to develop an approach to rapid national mapping uh, on the basis of ALS by interpretation both using uh, our uh, human actors and our artificial actors uh, in this. Uh, so bear with us uh, in the next year or so, and we shall deliver more results on that. Thank you.